You know, it's rare to see a, a painting without an artist's signature on it. Yet I see new wood turners coming into uh, wood turning uh, clubs for instant gallery or show and tell, whatever you want to call it, without signatures on the piece. So today, one of the things we're going to talk about is what do you, why do you sign your name? What do you sign it with? How do you go about it? Uh, this is not, not the only way. It's the way I do it, but I want to share with you how some others do it as well. Hi, y'all. Welcome to my shop. My name is Mike Peace, Mike Peace Wood Turning, and I'm passionate about wood turning. I'm here to share with you tips, tricks, and techniques that'll help you become a better, better wood turner. If this is what you're interested in, please, well, please hit the subscribe button. Okay, why do you why do you sign your work? Well, you sign your work number one because you're proud of it. Uh, if it's something you're not going to be proud of, then don't put your name on it. It also by Putting your name on it, believe it or not, it actually increases the value. For work you sign, it's something about that personal touch where you've put your name on it, and it helps create a story for the for the buyer because they've met maybe they've met the artist and 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 can better identify with you, and it's got your signature on it. First, let me say that turning that signing your work is a very personal thing. So as I said, it's not my way that I'm going to describe is not the only way to do it, and other people will do it different ways and I don't have a problem with that it's whatever works works for you but I want to show you a wide range of different ways to to deal with it what to sign Thomas Traeger wrote in an article some years ago in American Woodturner signature space is not important I can find a space somewhere on the piece to sign an artist's true signature is the appearance of the piece I like that also he wrote that your signature refined or not is part of your character if you scroll go ahead and scroll your name Decide if you want just your initials or your complete name. While initials are easier to inscribe, they do not provide much clue to the maker. If presenting an heirloom piece to a family member, your full name might be better appreciated in years to come. If you sell your work, develop a signature style and then be consistent with applying it. I think this is a, an alternative to your name when the item is very, very small and there's very little room. Otherwise, I, as a... Uh, uh, Thomas Traeger wrote, I think your name gives gives more meaning. Years, years from now, someone picking up your piece won't recognize your initials. Probably not. Anyway, I don't think they're going to recognize mine because I'm, I don't think I'm going to be famous. Uh, besides your name or initials, the other item you're going to uh, typically put on is uh, the species of the wood. Bear with me. I've got a new uh, a video uh, set up that I'm working with, so it's going to take just a little bit of experimentation. Okay, so an exception to, well, here's an example of a piece where, where I put the, the species of the wood, and I put my full name in a scrawl. I used a pen. This was done some, some years ago. Now I tend to use my first name. Uh, but where you may not want bother to put a species on it, if it tends to be more of, a, of an art piece like this, the people buying it aren't going to be as questioning as to what the nature of the wood is as maybe a bowl or, or a box. There's a lot of uh, discussion on whether or not you should put, uh, put, put the year uh, that you turned it. I would say if you're, giving, if you're keeping it in your collection uh, or giving it to family members, by all means put the year on it because it'll have more meaning. This, this box has meaning to me because it has 2013 and I can remember that's the year I first started doing, doing thread, thread chasing. Um, if you're selling your work, what I found is, is that some people will look at last year's uh, date and they'll say, oh, it didn't sell or that's last year's work. It's not as good as this year's work. So um, th that's something you might want to avoid it, the date if, if you're going to be selling something. Uh, for commemorative pieces, I don't have any here to show you, but uh, say if you're giving someone a plaque for an anniversary, then you might want to uh, also put on the piece the, the special occasion. Some folks like to put a code on the bottom. I don't, but if, if, if they sell their work and they keep it in different galleries, they need to uniquely identify every piece. So they'll put a, a code on the bottom that might be a, a series of, of uh, letters and numbers. For example, the, the first year might be G. They might not want to start with A because it might give something away. And then after that, they consecutively number the piece. So G1 is the first piece of the year, G2. And they put this in a database or, or a logbook. And then they can track their inventory. Uh, they can put additional information uh, off the piece in, in that 
in that uh, database or, or logbook. So um, that's that's a method that some folks uh, some folks use. Now let's talk about some of the different ways that you can you can actually sign your work. Uh, I think uh, the first one is is a a burned stamp. Um, you see this with flat work people, people that are making cabinets and tables where they get a special branding iron with their logo or initials on it. And that's fine for flat work, I, I think. Uh, personally, I don't believe it's a good solution for wood turning. I, a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, some of the positive advantages, if you're, if you're familiar with that and you already have one, um, then you got some familiarity with it. But some of the cons, uh, it is expensive. Those, those units can typically run over $100. Uh, they, they're, to me, they're rather industrial looking on a wood turning piece. They just look, look too in, industrial or, or commercial. Uh, so I don't think that's a, that's a good idea. And, and it is a, an outlay of money. The burn can vary on different pieces of wood, but that's true of using a wood burning unit. So uh, one of the key, no matter how you're going to be doing wood burning, whether using a brand or a pyrography pen, is you want to you do want to practice on on scrap pieces. Uh, burning, uh, that's the me method that I typically use for most of my my pieces, unless they're very small pieces, going to go in a craft show or uh, at, at a low low dollar value in, 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 when I'm turning them in production mode, and then I'll just uh, sign them with a with a pen. The let, let me show you a little bit about wood turning units okay here's a, uh, a a fairly inexpensive wood turning unit I got this used with my mini lathe when I first got into wood turning it's a, a link unit uh, and this can work it's got tips that actually thread so you can get different uh, different size uh, you get different kinds of, of tips the problem with this is there's no temperature control, so temperature is somewhat hard to uh, regulate, um, and and that's the biggest reason I don't, I don't like it. Plus, it's the the tips; most of them tend to be a little larger. But but it is an inexpensive unit. If you have one, it's a good place to start if you want to do wood burning. Uh, I prefer to to use a pyrography uh, pen. Let me let me show you uh, the. Uh, in just a moment, the unit that I use. I sign virtually every piece of uh, uh, work. I use this small hand piece on a, a wood burner. I'm using an Optima. And this is the smallest tip they have. It's a writing tip. And I just, I've gotten where if, if I get the temperature right, I can literally just write on it. I like to brace my finger a little bit. And I just, I used to use my longer name but you know I've gone to Mike instead of Michael and it makes it a little easier to to sign, sign my work and you just lightly touch down and I'm getting some spotting so I need to turn the temperature down just a little bit I can actually wood burn I think uh, more legibly than I can write you don't want to put your finish on until afterwards. So if you're finishing on the lathe, be careful about putting too much finish on, on the bottom. Optima is very similar to the uh, razor tip. uses the same kind of uh, voltage output. I like the controls better because it's got one switch. It's either on on the right, on the left, or off. Uh, and if the light's burning, it's on. Uh, the Optima, or the, rather the razor tip, uh, has got a couple of switches which if you're careless and not paying attention, it's a little easier to walk away and leaving it on, thinking you've turned it off when you actually shifted from one pin to another. But they're both both good machines. I believe the Optima is maybe 10 or 15 percent cheaper than the the razor tip. But there are the good makes out there. It's just one I use. Some tips with with wood burning. Number one, you wood burn on bare wood. Don't put any finish on it. Don't put any wax on it because it can cause a flash burning. It it can create uh, fumes that might in some instances be toxic. Okay, another approach that uh, some folks use is they'll they'll get these laser discs and they'll insert them into the hole used by their dry center. Um, that works for some folks. I don't much like it. It doesn't contain all the information that I might want to put on it, such as the date and the uh, species of wood. Uh, and to me, it looks a bit commercial. But you know, if it works for you, they're available. They're also somewhat pricey. I think maybe fifty to to a dollar a piece when you buy these in in sheets that have been laser laser engraved. All right, let's talk about 
talk about pins. Uh, there's a number of pieces. When I first started doing, I started using a a, a, a pin, and that, that was an example on that one right there, where I actually just wrote, wrote on it. Uh, I think I used, tended to use uh, these small Sharpies. Uh, this is brown, but I tended to use black. But what I found out was they're not as permanent. It says permanent on them, but they're not archival. You can pay a little bit more money, go to uh, um, any number of places, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, an art store, and you can get these what they call archival uh, pens that don't have acid in them, and they will they will last, and you can get them in very fine tips, and you can get them in different colors. Uh, something else you might try on darker woods is you can get a jelly, a gel type metallic pen, uh, silver or gold. You might try on darker woods like walnut or, or exotics. Uh, so those are all different, different approaches. You want to place your signature in an area where it's not going to show, uh, get a lot of uh, wear. Don't, don't write on bare wood with a pen because it'll have a tendency to bleed. So go ahead and put some finish on it. And frequently, for some people, just writing on top of that finish, uh, it seems to be adequate. Others want to put a coat on it. Make sure it dries. And I, I find if you're going to put a, a coat over uh, your signature information that you've done with a pen, besides being dry, hit it lightly with a, a mist on the, the type of finish you might use, whether it's uh, shellac or, or lacquer. Too much, and, and you're liable to find it. It fading or, or running rather and bleeding. Uh, if you use a wipe on, such as I do on Minwax Antique Oil, that doesn't work real well on top of uh, uh, some of these these uh, signatures you put on with a pen. Engraving. Um, engraving is is an approach that uh, some folks have had good luck with. Cindy Drozda uh, uses it on on her work. I understand. And this is not one of these Dremel rotary tools. This is, happens to be a cheap uh, Craftsman that I picked up used. Still got the price on it, and I've had it for probably 10 years. Uh, but it actually vibrates, and so it will indent the wood. Um, you can pick a, a nice Dremel model up for around 20, 20 bucks or so, uh, and you can change the tips on them. You can uh, file them down, make them smaller. Um, and when you do engrave the wood, and this works very well on, on darker woods, you can actually, let me see if I can show you an example of one or two I've done it on. Uh, you can use a gel uh, or, or a metallic wax to fill in that indentation um, with gold or, or a silver uh, type of, you know, something like uh, Chromacraft accent paste or uh, rub and buff commonly available at the Hobby Lobby and, and Michaels both of those uh, work well it's, it's the same kind of stuff I would use on on texturing on a, on a dark wood now one of the challenges is that sometimes you can get too much on it and one way to solve that is is just wipe it off gently with a little Renaissance wax and a and a little bit of paper towel and and usually you can get uh, the the spillover wax on the outside, but it won't tend to pull it up too much inside the uh, the engraved area. Yeah, here's here's another one that I engraved, not not too satisfactorily, I'd say. So where do you where do you sign your work? Well, there's a number of different different places. Uh, let me show you some some examples. On a bowl, uh, you know, sometimes you might want to uh, go around the the curve. Uh, on some some things, uh, I just like to have it go straight in the middle, uh, and and that that works for me. Sometimes you're going to have grooves, and you want to actually sign between those grooves, make those grooves uh, big enough for your your signature. On some small items, for example, an acorn box, it may be a challenge to figure out where to sign it, and you can. Uh, sign it actually on the inside of, of the box. On ornaments, I've got a little video clip here. You might want to give you share you some ideas on on where you can find places to to do your signature. About signing our work on this uh, uh, small work, it's it's sometimes a bit of a challenge. You have to be creative on these little chickadees. Works fine signing on the bottom. That doesn't work so well on these spheres, uh, but I was able to sign it here. Uh, here's a few pictures of some of the ornaments and where I've signed them.
You can use any number of different pens. Sharpies don't tend to work as well because they're not long lasting. Uh, they're not permanent. There are some metallic gel pens that can work. Uh, you can get them in different colors such as silver or, or gold. Uh, uh, here's one in red. Uh, you can get archival pens uh, which are acid free, will last a long time. You can get them in black. So use a very, very fine point for this one, example, uh, for example, uh, this Prismacolor. I think it's uh, a point, uh, point one is the size, and it's just really, really, really tiny. John Lucas from Tennessee says that for small items like ornaments, he uses a fine marker and just puts his initials and date uh, really small on the item. And then he includes a card with it that it's basically a business card folded in half that might have uh, his name, address, phone number, and the materials that the ornament is made out of. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Y'all stay safe here.